Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is episode 17 of your NHL 20 franchise mode here with the Detroit Red Wings as we're heading into a pretty big ending of the year here for the Detroit Red Wings as uh, right now we're third in the division, a couple points back, about 10 points back of, of course of the Sabres, but I mean the Buffalo Sabres are just an unholy team this year it seems like it, they were actually finally able to turn their team around funny enough. Uh, but the team is looking very stacked there in uh, Buffalo, and hopefully they'll be able to uh, make that team a championship team. But uh, we're headed into a very big trade deadline. Um, I want to improve the depth, of course, and I want to be ready for a long-term playoff run. Uh, that means picking up depth people that could play on the fourth line. Because Glenn Gowden, I love the guy, but I think we can pick up a better kind of playoff performer that we can use. And we can use Glenn Gowden as a guy that we can use for defensive depth. Um, everywhere else, I think it's perfect. Tyler DeFoley, uh, Joe Valeno, Tyler Bertuzzo, I think they'll get themselves going a little bit more. Um, but I, I think maybe even going after a, a little bit of a playmaker uh, to maybe fill in that third line there too. I was just kind of noticing that because I mean you really don't you got goal scorers But Joe Valen is not really a goals or a passer So maybe if we get somebody that's good for the depth wise that can pass I, I would definitely be looking into doing that But we are going to be improving the depth a little bit uh, and that's going to be of course one of our big goals Kind of coming into the, uh, the uh, playoff match uh, now. I was looking at Winnipeg and, and looking at um Players like, uh, what was it, uh, Boone Jenner uh, and stuff like that. But since I was kind of talking about maybe picking up a playmaker, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, I mean, he's not a centerman, though. We're going to be definitely be probably looking for a centerman. But Jack Roslovich, I mean, holy shit, 30 points this season. Damn, what a good season for Jack Roslovich. They're even probably going to pass a couple of his uh, career highs. Um, but I was even thinking about picking up some defensive depth, which I think I'm going to do automatically. Logan Stanley, um, big defensive defense, and, uh, six foot seven, 241 pounds. I think this can be a guy that we could take out Weston Moen or even use Joel Emmitson. Just some nice defensive depth, right, just to kind of mold the team a little bit better. Actually, I might go after Luke Green, but we do have a lot of offense offensive driven defensemen unless we lose all our offensive driven defensemen which would fucking absolute suck ass but i i don't think we're gonna be having that problem so a third and we'll take a fourth back we'll just do a third for logan stanley just sweeten it a touch so we could add a fifth round draft pick on there and that should make it work so there we go logan stanley welcome to your detroit red wings i'm very happy to have you on the team uh, Brad Lambert, holy fuck, what a pickup that would be. But we already have a pretty stacked core. We don't need anybody else to, to come into the core. We're just looking for some nice veteran uh, guy that would be huge to play on that third line. Rope Hints, I mean, perfect two-way forward. I don't know if he's going to be the exact type of passer we're going to want on the team. So I think we'll keep looking. But it's a good start. It's a good start to look for some good players. Uh, Ricard Raquel, he's a playmaker as well, and he's been passing the puck like a genie this season. Um, and four line, and he has a one year left on his contract. Now, if you really want to talk about going all in this season, that'd be a guy that I would definitely look at. I would maybe look at somebody a little bit cheaper because of the fact, like an Andres Anthony CU. That would be somebody I would like. Two years at $3 million, I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, he passes the puck like a god. I mean, not so well defensively, but. Playing on a good line with Tyler Bertuzzo and Tyler DeFoley, I feel like that would be a very underrated line in the NHL, and I feel like we could definitely get some explosive power uh, from that line. It wouldn't hurt us morale-wise because he's he is a third-line guy, so it would fit the team pretty fucking good. Uh, Ryan Johansson, too much money. I know he's still going to be locked up for. Oh no, he's it's his last year of his contract. I, I forgot that we're like almost a couple, almost half a decade in. I think we're in in this franchise now. Uh, Mikael Granlund, which we did pick up, I think, a year or two ago for Detroit, didn't we? No. Oh, that was for Chicago, though. But one year left, but he is pretty expensive, more expensive than what um, the other guy that we were looking at there. I cannot remember his name uh, for the life of me. What the fuck? Why am I forgetting people's names now? Like, where? why? Like, what the fuck? 
Probably that I'm a little too high. Uh, but we were looking at Andres Antonisiu from the Edmonton Oilers, uh, which I think is going to be a perfect pickup. He's not producing too much this season, but I feel like we can get him going in that form that he used to be when he was getting 65 points and stuff like that. I think he could be a low-key, very good centerman for the, uh, for the Detroit Red Wings, and we could pick him back up, right? I mean, I do not mind taking back Andres Antonisiu to Detroit. We're a brand-new team. I feel like it's going to be a better team for him to come in. Uh, we're not going to trade any of our prospects because I think we have a pretty good run in with prospects. But I will trade you guys a first round draft pick and a next year's third uh, for Andreas Antonisi. We'll pick up like a fourth and a fifth of this year. Uh, if we can, will that go through? And no, it will not. We'll take off the fourth and the fifth. Sweet. So Andreas Antonisi is also part of the Detroit Red Wings now. So some big, big moves for the Detroit Red Wings making moves for Andreas Antonisi. Uh, and also Logan Stanley improving the depth wise for the uh, um, for the Detroit Red Wings, which I am very very happy about. Uh, Malton Blue, uh, we'll send you down. Oh, we can't do that. Can we send down a defenseman maybe? Send down like Logan Stanley, but he's gonna get reassigned. Shit, why? For fuck's sakes. So I guess Glenn Gowden will be an emergency guy if need be. Um, Malton Blue, he'll be stuck up here, I guess. Okay, yeah, we'll just leave it as it is. I, I mean, I don't know why it's such a hard thing to do, but I, I don't care. We'll uh, throw in Andre Santin to see you now in the lineup. Throw him up on that second line, or that third line, I mean, and, and that's a pretty lethal line. If they kept Andre Santin to see you, I would have loved him on the team. But he even plays better up on these higher lineups, too, which is the... The surprising part. So hopefully we can get to Foley going a little bit more. I mean, he's already doing pretty damn well playing on the third line with 13 goals this season. Um, and I think he could get back up to 20 again. So hopefully this third line could be a huge third line for us. And then that nice fourth line there. Um, special teams, I think we'll play Anthony CU on that power play. Uh, because of the fact that I think he will be a killer guy on the uh, the power play for our depth there. He'll be able to pass the puck. Andreas Anton to see you defensively. Uh, I'm not too sure about. How actually he's been very good defensively almost his entire career. And he puts up hits too, which is very nice. Okay, so Anton to see you. He hopefully he'll bring us some uh, energy to the club here in Detroit. Uh, we proved our depth. I think we're looking very strong for the Detroit Red Wings this upcoming season. I'm very very excited to see what this team will do heading into the playoffs, uh, especially against some tough teams. Uh, it's definitely going to be a fight to the battle. So let's go, Detroit. Let's go off to a hot start. Let's play really good hockey, and we get a first win right off the get-go against the Buffalo Sabres, our New York Rangers, and Anaheim Ducks, and the Florida Panthers, and the Boston Bruins. Oh, my Lord. Four wins in a row with the new acquired Andres Anthony CU and Logan Stanley, fractured jaw. We will have to call up a forward. So we're going to have to do that every single time because I am not, right now, I do not want to play a defenseman uh, in my forward position. So we're, we want to call up Glenn Gowden. That's the one thing we want to fucking do right now. So Logan Stanley, for fuck's sakes, we're going to have to play Logan Stanley. Can we actually get somebody that can maybe make it work instead of Glenn Gowden? Go for someone that's cheaper. Like a, uh, I would totally do one of these two guys. Whoever's better, kind of defensively, who is better defensively upon my team. Jonathan Brigham's pretty low overall, though. But how well has he been doing in the AHL? He's actually been doing pretty damn good. Thirty points this season. Um, he's good defensively. That's the nice thing about him. Loki, he's one. He's that can't really do anything else. Uh, but not that bad defensively, and I would totally do a move if we can do a swap. Okay, never mind. We'll have to play a defenseman there. That's okay. It is all right, I guess. I mean, that sucks, but fuck, what can we do, I guess? So, during the playoffs, we're kind of fucked depth-wise. Okay, we'll play Joel Edmondson up on that line so he doesn't hurt any lineups. Fuck, man, that sucks. I hate salary cap. I don't think salary cap really matters once you kind of get into the playoffs. Hopefully. We'll have to see. But 
Let's keep ripping up, and we beat Ottawa. Come on, beat New Jersey. I mean, Buffalo Sabres are a far fetch from us right now, but a second-place divisional spot would be huge. Home ice advantage over the Tampa Bay Lightning, which is what I want. And we got some big games coming up right now with Tampa Bay being a point ahead uh, behind us. We need to really pick up our pace and really start slamming down some games. So I didn't see you. How well are you doing with the uh, new... Oh, wow, six points in 10 games. The minus two, he's actually not doing too bad until Foley... Uh, he's had a couple of goals in his past couple of games. So that third line, Loki, is doing pretty damn well for itself. And that's the exciting part. So uh, lost there, but we did get a win. And we're still in a good second place divisional spot here with the Detroit Red Wings. Big win over the Tampa Bay Lightning. And a big win over the Boston Bruins. We're really cementing that second place spot. And we clinch a playoff spot. We need to get some big victories right now, though. Big, uh, big loss and a loss against the Tampa Bay Lightning, but we win against the Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't think it's enough, though, to get the second. No, it is not. We just fall behind the Tampa Bay Lightning, and we will not get home ice advantage in the first round of playoff action. We uh, went 4-5-1 and one in our last 10 there, so we struggled near the end of the season. We were going hot at the uh, right at the end in the uh, um, Ending the trade deadline that we were red hot and we were a second best in the NHL for goal scoring wise and even Tampa's way lower than us. We were nuts um, defensively, second best team defensively. Right, uh, Tampa Bay, man, what a great defensive team there. Uh, our power play wise um, actually improved a bit better. We went to 17.3% and our PK went up to an 82.5 second best in the NHL or for our division at least. So it's looking like a very bright year. Dylan Larkin threw up an 81-point season. I mean, Dylan Larkin, one of the most consistent players I think we have ever had here in Detroit. I mean, I mean, when he first started playing here, but that was when he was young. But ever since we started doing the simulation, he's been a consistent NHL player almost his entire career. But for that one season there, that was the only bad season for Dylan Larkin. But this man... It's been a god for the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Matt the throwing up another 30 bomb this season. Pasternak kind of struggled this year again. He only throwing up 24 goals. And I mean, he's just kind of been that consistent guy. He used to be a 30-point guy. But now he's kind of back down to that basement. And I, I don't know if he's really worth that that $9.9 .9 million. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog throwing up another 60 uh, season. And Shane Wright uh, had 57 points this season as well. I'm hoping that Shane Wright starts bursting out of himself as well. Andreas Anthony to see you. I felt like they did get a lot more minuses. But, I mean, 12 points and 20 go uh, and 20 games, not too bad. Uh, I think the third line definitely improved a lot with that uh, kind of an improvement. Um, but the depth, I mean, is looking very, very good. Seth Jones, another great caliber season from Seth Jones once again 56 points this season um, and, and Sjorkin this season 36 points uh, for him as well he did pretty damn well still a minus though which is uh, kind of a bummer he did play with Brian Clark at the end of the season, but otherwise the team is not looking too bad. Goal team wise, Philip Grubauer, a 905 at the 272. Looks like we are going to be going with Grubauer to start it off. Uh, Grubauer was overall just the better goaltender uh, above David Riddick. Uh, I mean, if we got gave David, David Riddick a bit more time instead of 27 games, it probably would have been a bit better. Um, but honestly, I, I don't think they did too bad. Uh, the, the tandem and I, we're going to see how good they do in the playoffs. Cause that's going to be definitely the biggest thing is how, how well will they play during the playoffs? Uh, but Brassois led the league and wins. That's crazy. Uh, and, uh, Igor Shiorskin, uh, is in Chicago now. So kind of a different look at the league with goaltenders wise, uh, rookie scares. Of course, we got nothing there. Um, cause our team is still, uh, I mean, we're young, but we don't have any prospects emerging in the team. Uh, Drew Doughty leading the league in points somehow as a 35 year old. Don't know how, uh, Rasmus Dahlin was just behind him. Uh, even Rasmus Dahlin might actually win that award. And Ryan Ellis a 70 bomb this year. What a fucking year for Ryan Ellis, man. Uh, ripping up the league. Quinn Hughes as well. Uh, and Aaron Mechblad there for forwards wise. We had Tarasenko ripping up the league this year with 102 points. Uh, McDavid following up with 97. And then Capo Caco as well with Leon Drysdale, Matthews, and Dylan Trom up there as well. Uh, as well. Uh, goal scoring wise, Tarasenko, Sagan take over the league. Uh, and also Caleb Vance, another American born player playing uh, for Minnesota there. American born, born boy. 
Um, and Jackson Steckel there, man. I wish we got Jackson Steckel. He would have been a beast player instead of fucking having Pasternak. But, I mean, Pasternak is still pretty goddamn good, too. So, in the first round of playoff action, our second time being in the playoffs, we're going to be going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, there's a heated rivalry between these two teams ever since Detroit Red Wings jumped over to the Atlantic Division. They have battled... And most of the time, the Detroit Red Wings have lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. We have not played so well against this team. And uh, this is kind of an older team, right? You got uh, Kucherov, 31 years old now. Um, but this team is still a very lethal team. Yanni Gerdo, uh, Braden uh, Point, and Victor Arvidsson is their first line. Second, they got Dezingle, Kerfoot, and Nikita Kucherov. Third line, they got Gallagher, Sorelli, and Wilson. And then they got Donskoy, Stamkos, and Taylor Radish. So the depth is very scary looking. I mean, you get to seriously have these guys probably rip you in a couple goals, right? And it's kind of unbelievable that they were bad on the on, on goal scoring wise because I feel like the team with Kucherov and Stamkos would probably carry the offense. But I mean, Kucherov has not been producing the same since. I mean, he's kind of struggled most of this franchise mode. Uh, he's not been putting up the points that he usually puts up. Uh, defensively, they are very weak and old, too. I mean, we could very well just take advantage of that because we all know they're not going to be a very speedy defensive core. I mean, look at the speed on most of those guys. They're three stars. So it's going to be a very easy core to kind of speed around. And then Andre Vasilevsky, of course, uh, and Hugo uh, Anafelt. Uh, so the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're looking very strong. They're looking very ready for a first-round playoff action. Uh, they're not very much of a goal-scoring team, but they're one of the best defensive teams somehow in the league. Uh, we'll see how the Tampa Bay Lightning... Uh, uh, we'll see how the Detroit Red Wings face up against the Tampa Bay Lightning as it's going to be a huge series. Uh, but it will be in the next episode. But for right now, guys, I'm going to sign off here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Adios, amigos.